I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Mark Middlestead. This week, our topic is Mastering Fear. And on today's episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast Weekend Edition, we're going to discuss the only thing we have to fear. During World War II, Winston Churchill, in his address to the people of Great Britain, was famous for his inspiring message when he said, The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. During that time, it was a gut check. The Germans were bombing England, and everyone was living with a certain amount of fear, and rightly so. But honestly, the only thing we can possibly have rational fear of is actual imminent danger. Everything else that is not a clear and present danger to our well-being is an irrational sense of fear. If something is not having an immediate impact on our well-being, health, or survival, it is nothing but a story in our mind. So much of what we're afraid of isn't even happening. Let me say this again. Almost everything we have a fear of isn't even happening. What this means is that in our current moment of now, If something is not having an immediate impact on our well-being, health, or survival, it is nothing but a story in our mind. So in other words, 99% of what we fear isn't real. It's the story our ego creates around some event or situation that we are actually fearing. In other words, the fear isn't even legitimate. We could have a fear of almost anything if we listen to our ego. But the truth is, we're afraid of what might happen in near or distant future that has not happened and most likely never will happen. So what is it we are actually in fear of? I've spent my life living in a manner that never really left me feeling any sense of fear. What is there to be afraid of? Almost nothing. When humans were living out in the wild, there was always danger lurking out there that we could legitimize being fearful of. Fear of being eaten by a wild animal. Fear of an environment that was at the time quite brutal, hostile, and unforgiving. We needed to stay on high alert to predators, nature, in a dangerous environment. And yet for all these things we could have been fearful of, humans generally only lived in fear when the danger actually presented itself to us, which caused us to kick in our fight or flight response, the stress response. As soon as the danger passed, so did our fear. But nowadays, we live in relative comfort and safety. There is very little that causes a legitimate fight-or-flight response, and yet we live in fear almost 24-7 about things that aren't even happening. But our ego is taking every single situation and circumstance and creating a what-if story in our mind which means for everything that is happening in our present moments that should cause no fear, our ego is creating fear out of nothing. It's just a story created that plays on our emotions, mostly worry, doubt, anxiety, and yes, even fear. We've gotten so used to living in our ego mind of stories that we live in fear almost constantly. If nothing is there to be afraid of, we'll make something up to be afraid of. Think of every little scenario we go through on a daily basis. 
From the minute we wake up until we go to bed, our egos are filling our heads with all kinds of things to worry and obsess about. We're afraid of our own shadow. We fear we don't measure up to everyone else's standards, whether it's about our career, finances, health, body image, appearance, talents, skills, and so on. And even when we aren't living in fear of those things, we'll make up even more things to be fearful of. We fear being late to work. We fear losing our job. Or what will happen if we quit our job and go off on our own and live in fear of making it with our own businesses we might start up. Or fear of failing at something, like going back to school to get a degree later in life. We're in almost constant fear of others' opinions of us. What will these people think about us? When it comes to our careers, we fear what our coworkers think of us, what our bosses think of us, or we live in fear of failure and even live in fear of success. When it comes to our finances, we fear not making enough money or the fear of insecurity that we don't have enough, or even if we do now, we are one major catastrophe that will wipe us out financially, and so we feed into the fear of lack, where we live our life almost with the prime directive that we need insurance to alleviate our fears. Even then, we live in fear that the insurance we do have is inadequate, and the insurance industry uses our fear against us, trying to convince us that no matter how much we have, we need more. When it comes to our health, boy, this is a whole new can of fear we open. Every little ache or pain or being overweight or out of shape causes us to fear for our health. I'm not even talking about hypochondriacs who use every little thing that is wrong with them as a sure sign it is some major impending collapse of our health. Look at the pandemic. We have never seen such a global fear for our health as this. Even for those who didn't previously take care of their health, suddenly became fearful of something that was still largely in our own control. But we lived in fear because we were told, like we've always been convinced of regarding our personal health, that this pandemic was different and we all had to run and hide because now we really didn't have any control over our health. It was all doom and gloom and death was just around every corner and we couldn't even be around our fellow man, much less our own families, without worrying about dying. People wanted to trust the science, but didn't really. They were afraid to question science itself, which is absurd because the whole point of science is to question it. We live in such fear over the pandemic that even though there is so much scientific evidence that contradicts itself, we will use fear to trust only that science that supports our confirmation bias and alleviates our fear, even though all sides of the arguments has actual data-driven science behind it. And we live in fear that the science is wrong, or may be wrong, so we really trust no one and live in fear of everyone. We were even afraid to question authority, even though we never bothered to stop and question our own fears. Interesting twist on the fear during the pandemic. Even while the world suddenly became fearful of sickness and death from the pandemic, the great majority of people still have no fear regarding health concerns they actually can do something about. People will have health fears they brought on themselves by their lack of taking control and care of their own body, leaving them vulnerable and compromised. Those things they dismiss. But the actual virus itself? Now suddenly they're living in fear? 
It's like we never got sick or died of anything prior to the pandemic. But the pandemic gave these people a new fear to latch on to. Never mind that they didn't fear obesity, diabetes, heart failure, the flu, overdosing on prescription drugs, and all the things they probably should have had some fear over but carelessly ignored, things that are more likely to kill them than the pandemic itself. They feared the virus more than their own actions. Talk about irrational fears. We're afraid of our own shadows. In our modern way of life, we live in fear of almost everything. We fear others more than ever before. Our level of mistrust is at an all-time high because not only do we have our own petty personal fears about so many things, we even fear others, which again is just a collection of stories our ego creates about other people, even those we really know nothing about. Many of these stories are based on programmed fears about others who are not like us, be it race, ethnic groups, cultural upbringing, religion, philosophies, politics, you name it. If someone is different than ourself, our eagle will point out and make up some story about someone we don't even know. So now, not only do we have an entire lifetime of fictitious stories we make up about ourselves, we also have a lifetime of stories about others we really know nothing about, and yet we fear them because what we mostly fear is the unknown. Of course, the fear of dying is about a great unknown. Very few of us have died only to come back knowing there is nothing to fear in death. I wish I could convince you there is nothing to fear, but fear is another inside job. But for those who say they fear death, I believe people mostly fear living. It's like those who say they are afraid of failing, more than likely fear succeeding, because failing is a known but success leaves us questioning too much about the future if we succeed. We know there is some finality to dying, that for as much fear as we might have about it, we know it's the end of this life as we know it. Yet in living, there is a lot of unknown variables and experiences out there to fear. And the eagle is going to fill in all the blanks with all the many things life brings us to fear about. The ego doesn't want to say to ourself, well, maybe I won't die, because we know we will. But when it comes to living, the ego will make up a lot of stories as our life plays out because it's an endless supply of maybes. Maybe this will happen. Well, maybe that will happen. Maybe nothing happens, but maybe the worst will happen. But you don't know. Maybe the best will happen. But we don't know, and so our ego fills our head with all these things to live in fear of. I happen to be writing the script today for my recording later, here on Christmas Eve Day sitting home alone while the rest of my entire family is celebrating our family Christmas elsewhere because I tested positive for COVID. Just hearing that automatically puts fear in people's minds and for those who know me or care about me suddenly become worried about me. They have a certain sense of fear simply because I tested positive for it. Yet, I have nothing to fear. I take care of my own health. I have no fear about it at all. I didn't want to put anyone else at risk, not out of my own fear, but just to alleviate anyone else's. And I'm fine with it, so I'm home alone, while everyone else is having a good time. But it's not out of fear. I'm actually rather enjoying the total solitude and silence today. 
Silent night, holy night, indeed. Merry Christmas to me. Since the topic this week is mastering fear, I thought I would share with you some things on how you can master fear. One thing I learned very early on in life about fear stems from being a musician and going on stage and performing in front of hundreds and sometimes thousands of people. Some people have stage fright, living in fear that everyone is watching them and fearful of being judged. The truth is, no one's really watching you personally anyway. I never felt any fear going on stage. I mean, to me, I wasn't a very afraid of going on stage. I had no fear of going on stage. I was just excited in the moment. So I never felt any fear going on stage. Why? First of all, I was prepared. So anytime you want to do something that you are afraid of, you can master your fear by being prepared. If you're prepared, you are better able to do almost anything without fear because you know you are ready for anything. Another thing you can do to master fear is anytime you feel anxiety, worry, doubt, or fear of something you are about to do, is simply substitute the words that describe your fearful emotion with the words, I am excited. You can't be fearful and excited at the same time. For example, if you fear flying and are going to get on a plane, tell yourself, I'm so excited to fly. What an adventure and experience this will be. Enjoy your life experiences by being excited about them. When it's over, you'll wonder why you were ever afraid of it in the first place. But the most important and easiest way to master fear is to simply slow down. See the situation for what it is. Pay attention to your emotion. Are you actually afraid of what is happening? Or are you listening to your ego and your fear lies in the story about it? Like being afraid to fly. There is nothing to fear. You are simply getting on a plane. The plane is simply lifting off the ground. The plane is flying through the air. The fear you had about it? That was your ego telling you a story about flying that isn't even true. The stories may include, what if there's turbulence? What if there's bad weather? What if the plane crashes? Is any of this actually happening, or are you living in fear of a made-up story? The true mastery of fear lies in taking conscious mind control and living in the present moment, excitedly cherishing every moment as it happens, and ignoring any and all stories surrounding the present moment. Just like when there is no story, there is no problem. When there is no story, there is no fear either. The only thing we have to fear isn't fear itself. It's believing in the story that creates the fear out of nothing. Well, Merry Christmas to everyone, or Happy Hanukkah, or Happy Holidays, whatever it is you wish to celebrate this time of year. But above all, celebrate life. You are love itself. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by clicking like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.